Our scripture lesson this morning is taken from Proverbs. It is Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. I told them in Sunday school the other week that when we were growing up, my sister and I had these little 78 records. They were orange and they were yellow and they were from the Mickey Mouse Club. One of them was Jiminy Cricket saying, Proverbs, Proverbs, they, they're so true. Proverbs tell us what to do. Don't know that we'd have a song like that today from Mickey Mouse, but let's see what chapter three has to tell us what to do. This is further benefits of wisdom. My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commandments in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you prosperity. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Here ends the reading of the word. Yes, Proverbs is very good for that, for telling us uh, what we should be doing and where to be looking. Proverbs, I feel, has uh, almost taken a back seat in our modern world today um, to its big brother, Psalms, right? We always talk about the Psalms and things like that. Proverbs is also great. Proverbs has almost become uh, the things you see on little wooden signs, right? That's kind of how Proverbs has uh, moved on in our world today. But there is just wonderful information and uh, what we should be doing throughout it. Uh, today, I would like to talk to you about stubbornness. And there are times when I feel as if I may not be the most qualified person to talk about a subject on a Sunday. Uh, some high theological concept that I'm trying to give to you. Maybe I don't feel that I, I can uh, honestly give that information to you the way you need to. Uh, today is not one of those days. Because like so many other people, I am willing to admit this, I guess, uh, I can be very stubborn at times. Uh, it's something that's part of my personality that I've tried to work on over the years, but though I have found some improvement, at least I like to believe that I have, um, there are times when it's like I'm a rock and I just cannot be moved. Now, being stubborn isn't always a bad thing. We think of it as always being bad. Uh, but it is not always a bad thing. When it comes to the absolute truths in our lives, the things that we know that are correct, things like Jesus is the Son of God, and our salvation is found in Him, well, those are things that it's okay to be stubborn about. But what we do find is that there are many things in our lives that we are very stubborn about, and perhaps we shouldn't be. So when we think about being stubborn, this idea, what are, we can really strip it down to is this, when someone is being stubborn, it is taking the position that I am right about something and everyone else in the world is wrong about that same thing. See, if we are stubborn about something, we are unwilling, despite all evidence that might be staring us in the face, to be moved towards change in any way because we are right or we believe we are right about what it is we are talking about. Now, this past year, I ran into a pretty, at least I think it was kind of funny, situation during annual conference. And it was with someone else that was being stubborn because they believed that they were right despite what others, and in this case, read that as what I was trying to tell them. One evening when we were on a break at the conference, I took the opportunity to go outside of the auditorium and kind of walk down the street in Williamsport just to get up and stretch my legs a bit. And as I was walking down the sidewalk, I came upon a woman and two men standing in the middle of the sidewalk talking to one another. Now, they were a bit older than I am, uh, if it helps you set the scene a little bit better, but 
And I, and I knew that they were attending the conference because um, everyone knew if you were at the conference because you had a name tag. And uh, despite walking out of the auditorium, everyone still had their name tag on. So you knew who was there to attend the conference. And they had their name badges around their neck. So it was easy for me to identify them. So as I was walking uh, by the woman, she had her back to me and the men were facing me. And as I grew closer to the woman, I noticed that there was a yellow jacket that was about to land on the woman's back. So I immediately sprung into action. I raised my hand. I was going to swat that yellow jacket away. See, I was willing to let it sting me because I know that I am not allergic to stings. Um, but I didn't know if this lady was or not. So I came flying up behind her. I raised my hand. I was about to hit that yellow jacket away. And as I did that, the two men that were facing me, their eyes must have gotten really big. Because the woman turned around and saw me coming at her like this. And she was very alarmed to see me uh, going like this uh, to strike that yellow jacket. You know, I knew what I was doing, but she didn't. Now, I don't believe that I am an overly intimidating person physically. I'm not really all that tall. I don't think I look that scary most of the time. But I do forget that if I were to run at a person with my hand raised in that motion, I'm probably an intimidating presence if you turn around and are surprised by it. So that woman was very alarmed. She turned around and she yelled, what are you doing? And I stood there and I lowered my hand and the yellow jacket flew away, of course, when she turned around. And I said, you were about to be stung by a yellow jacket. I was going to try to swat it away so it didn't get you. And she said, it's just a bee. Just leave it alone and I will be fine. See, I know that as well. You don't go around swatting bees. You just leave. I tell my kids this all the time. Just leave it alone. It'll leave you alone. And I tried to explain to her that, no, it wasn't a bee. It was a yellow jacket. I had clearly seen it. And I had seen that it was in an agitated state and it was going to sting her. She again said, it's a bee and it's fine. Now, she said this in a tone that was really saying to me, get away from me and my friends. You scared us, and I need you to leave right now. So I apologized to them, and I walked further down the street. And as I've told you a few times uh, from the pulpit here, I have really good hearing, right? So as I was walking away, I heard the woman whisper to her friends, can you believe that guy? <laughs> he was going to hit me so hard, he would have knocked me over just because a bee was near me. Now, who knows the difference between a bee and a yellow jacket when it comes to stinging someone? What's the big difference? Pain. The, uh, the pain, yeah, that's one. What else? Alan. Bees die when they sting you. Yellow jackets do not. Yellow jackets can sting you over and over and over again. So, you see, this woman was being stubborn. She thought that she knew better than I did, even though she couldn't see that yellow jacket behind her, and I could. She was so convinced that she was right, I think it honestly could have started stinging her over and over again, and she still would have insisted that it was a bee. So I wonder if we ever find ourselves in that same sort of situation in our life. You know, as I said, I feel more than qualified to preach to you today about being stubborn because I am a stubborn person. But where I hope that we are all trying not to be stubborn is when God is trying to guide us onto the path that he wants for us. You see, I believe that God does do that, that he tries to help guide our steps. He doesn't force us down a path, right? But he does strongly encourage us to follow the right path. And in our scripture for today, we find just that idea. We are told not to forget his teaching, to keep his commands in our hearts. And we are told that the reward for this is long life of peace and prosperity. And we are reminded to live our lives as examples 
of love and faithfulness in all that we do so that we can win favor in the sight of God. You know, there are countless scriptures throughout the Bible that tell us that God wants us to be on the right path, that God will lead us to the right path. And I think the thing that causes a lot of trouble in our own lives when it comes to this and being stubborn is that we constantly want to lean on our own understanding of things. We like to think that we know everything, don't we? We like to believe that we know the best way of doing something. And if you're thinking to yourself, oh no, pastor, not me, not at all. Well, I want you to ask anyone who is a baker, what's the best way to make an apple pie? See if you get the same answer from someone. Ask a car guy what the best brand of vehicle is. It's Ford, by the way. Ask a football fan who the best player of all time is. It's Troy Palomalu, by the way. No. See, that's the thing. We all think that we have these ideas. We have these ideas and opinions on things. We believe that we are always right. And the truth is that most of the time we don't have a full picture of things. We fill in the blanks for the things that we don't know so that we can get in our mind this idea that we are right. We want to believe that if something is buzzing around behind us, it's just a bee because we can hear it, so it must be a bee, but sometimes it's a yellow jacket. You see, we are not to lean on our own understanding. We are to lean on God's understanding, the one who knows all things. Verses 5 and 6 of our scripture, we're told, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him, and he will make your path straight. By trusting in the Lord with all our heart and leaning not on our own understanding of things, but on his instead, and by submitting to him in all things, he will put us on the right path. See, he's going to do this because he's going to show us the way that he wants us to be heading. Now, I believe that if we are doing this, if we are leaning on God's understanding and if we are submitting to him, he's also going to let us know when we are in danger of going down the wrong path. But ultimately, it is up to us to heed those warnings. You see, just like that lady and I on the street, God sees the things in our lives that want to do us harm. He sees the decisions that we are making and the outcomes of those decisions and how they can hurt us. But we tend to be stubborn and think that we are still heading on the right track, despite seeing the results that are showing us that we are not. See, we like to double down sometimes when we make a mistake. There's a psychological term for that. It's called the sunk cost fallacy. The sunk cost fallacy. And it can be explained this way. If you were to gamble and lose a hundred times in a row, you would start to think, you know what? I'm due. The next one, I'm definitely going to win, right? Well, no, that is not how it works. There is no guarantee of winning just because you've lost a hundred times in a row. And in our own lives, when we begin down that wrong path, sometimes we think, well, I've come this far. There's no way back but to continue pushing on the road that I am on. I spent so much time, so much effort, so much money, whatever it may be, chasing this one thing. I have to keep going down that road. Well, that is our stubbornness at work. You see, we don't have to keep chasing the wrong things on the wrong path. God is always willing to set us on the right path. We just have to be willing to trust him and to give up on our own stubbornness. Now, it doesn't matter how far you've gone down the wrong path. It doesn't matter if you've been on the wrong path for 50 years of your life. If you're willing, he is willing to restore you and to put you on the right path this day. 
So let us commit ourselves to being a bit less stubborn. Let us trust in the Lord with all our hearts so that we may be put on the right path. My challenge for you over the next two weeks is this. Trust in the Lord and see where he leads you. Amen.